Iron Lord, what are you doing? <laughs> but it's a tangent. This is a tangent. I found this out uh, when I was editing my last video that I have apparently the loudest birds in the world outside my window. Can you hear them? <laughs> my window is closed too. Like all the doors are closed and the windows are closed. It's just the loudest birds on the planet. So if you hear bird sounds, there you go. <laughs> what is happening with Elm's accent in this episode? Of course he's not going to do it. Like I'm not crazy. She used to sound different, right? Your brains, for one. I don't know, maybe because she does so little, her voice actress can't keep track of whatever accent she's supposed to have. <laughs> oh, bad. Honestly, if we had known who you were, we'd be laughing over a hot meal right now. I don't like this either, but the top priority- Oh yes, I'm gonna let the girl who I no longer trust because she betrayed me take the guy who is now actively going against me into the brig. This definitely isn't going to backfire. They definitely aren't going to like team up together. Let them keep on going right on by because apparently I trust her now because I just have just proven that the writers have scrubbed away all of my brain cells and ruined my character. See, I'm pretty sure She's gonna take Mero and they're gonna team up against Ironwood because bleh. And they're definitely gonna run into Crow and Robin later because I'm pretty sure that's who they ran into in the elevator. It's hard to care about Crow and Robin or Winter and Mero because they've done so little this entire volume. Like it's easy to forget that they were even there. And I really am gonna be upset if after being almost entirely empty from this volume, they're gonna just burst in during the finale and get a really cool fight in. It's like, no, let's focus on the characters who, you know, actually got development this time around. Otherwise, Mantle is done for. So, how do we stop him? So, they're trapped too. So now that we finally finished recapping last episode, we have to do something. So, what's it gonna be? Well, I guess we can just sit here and have really long, weird pauses in our dialogue. So, I guess that's what we're doing. I, maybe it's me, it's a nitpick. It's a really dumb nitpick, but I hate it when it's like, talking, talking, so, talking. And I'm like, oh, just just say so. Like, the line reads in this episode is kind of lackluster. Trust is, trust is a risk. And we have ours. Shut up. Okay, then why don't you just leave? Yes, hate each other. Then nothing has changed! We're in the exact same place we were yesterday! Ruby's kinda right. We feel- I feel like we kinda just reset the story back to how we started this volume. Which kinda felt like a reset to how we ended last volume. It's just- I don't know, it's another big grim attack. Ironwood doing something drastic. We've now seen this kind of plot point happening three different times across two volumes. A oh, way to go, guys. You pissed off the protagonist. Good job. I hope you're proud. Go to your rooms. Well, the majority of the voice performances in this episode is not amazing. At least I can always count on Juniper to dive in and give me some stellar performances. You shut people out so you don't have to feel things that are hard. Getting stronger that we, I, wouldn't fail. <laughs> Just carrying the team here, guys. Well done. Good job. Proud of you. And that's what I love about... I love you. know who just Nora is and I have to do it alone it's a terrible day for rain because I've always loved you Lyran what do you mean it's not raining but I still got to get mine sorted out before I can be the partner you need yes it is Boop. <laughs> I don't know what to actually say about this scene. It's just really, really, really good. Like, this is not even just, like, a good scene compared to the rest of the episode or compared to the rest of this volume. For this entire series, this has been, like, one of the best conversation scenes we've gotten. This is, like, at the same level as Jean talking to Pyrrha about Destiny. Again, it's Juniper. Team Juniper gets the best scenes. <laughs> no, it's it's really sweet. I'm glad- I, I like how Nora, like, casually put in an aspect of her, of her background that we didn't know about and having them actually be very open and honest about what they want to do with their relationship moving forward. This is what I've been waiting for. It's amazing. It's a really good scene. It's beautiful. It's smart. It's heartfelt. The performances are 
spectacular. Well done. Well done. This. This. When I think of this episode, this is gonna be the scene I think about. This scene with Yang and Ruby, similarly, is really, really good. This is like the first time the two girls have felt like real sisters for a long while. And it's not just the way they talk to each other, it's not just the fact that they reference the fact that they're sisters, it's also the way Yang is like animated to being addressing Ruby. How she kneels down to look her in the eye, how she stands up and gets frustrated when Ruby doesn't get what she's saying right away about risks. Even just, it's cute seeing Yang putting her head on Ruby's shoulder. There's these little moments here and there that really help highlight the fact that they are sisters without being like over the top about it. And it's just even little animations like this more frequently throughout the volumes would, would go the distance with reminding the audience that Yang and Ruby are in fact sisters and love each other and care a lot. As for what they're actually talking about, I like seeing Ruby be the one who's disappointed. For being the like optimistic non-stop, here's a happy little monologue, here's a happy little monologue, uplifting speech, be my best friend speech, the power of friendship. It's finally, it's nice seeing her finally be the one to be defeated, to be upset, give up hope, because for being the moral high ground this entire time, I get it. After all this optimism and all this like, we gotta believe in ourselves, everything just keeps falling to shit around her and no wonder she's upset. <laughs> I think we could have had the scene without having the arbitrary arguments between Ruby and Yang in episode one. They could have very easily just split up on their own accord and Ruby could still be upset and Yang could still sit there and comfort her. So that's the one thing I don't like about this, this little moment, but the rest of it is really good. The dialogue and the performances for this, this scene and the Ren and Nora scene really save this episode because most of it is kind of just boring. Eek! The wind! <laughs> Kill me. Kill me. Damn. Like, we all were thinking it, but it's fucked up hearing Penny actually saying it. <sighs> it's creepy thinking that if Jean wasn't here, they might have had to resort to that. And even then, I don't even know if this is completely off the table anymore. I'm, I, my, my bet is we're gonna get to the vault and we're gonna open the vault and one of two things is gonna happen. Either Penny will die and she will give her maiden powers to Ruby in the moment, though I hope it would be Nora. <laughs> give Nora some love, she needs it. She wants something, she wants more of herself, give it to Nora, <laughs> make her the maiden. Or the other thing is they're gonna go in, they're gonna open the vault and then Penny will use the staff to make herself a real girl and then we won't have to worry about the virus because the virus is gonna be gone because she's gonna be a real girl. It's gonna be one of those two things. I'm putting, I'm putting money down. I guarantee it's gonna be one of those two things. <laughs> so this moment is fun. This is a good, like, I, I guess I'll call it action because it was definitely exciting to watch, but if we boil it down, this is essentially just a really complex way of having the cleric cast heal. <laughs> I highly doubt you're in the same place you started. No, don't do this. You guys have been getting your asses kicked. Some of that. My fault, but like... No, don't do this. I'm going to be super pissed if you all finally decide to give up the moment I switch sides. No, God! No, God, please, no! 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 <sighs> <laughs> no, I fucking- I hate. I hate. I fucking hate. I fucking hate this. It's dumb. Why? Why do we got to? Why do we need to? I don't like believing the idea that people throw around all the time that the writers only do things in the story because the fans really wanted it. Oh, I want Neo to come back. Well, here's Neo. Oh, I want Penny to come back. Well, here's Penny. I want Emerald to become a good guy. Well, fuck off. Fuck you. Fuck the right the fuck off. Oh, it's because because I'm a I'm feel really sawy and I'm a cute little girl. So can I join your team? Oh, tee hee hee. You so silly, Em over there. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. This is shit to your writing. This is awful. This is god fucking awful. How c <clears throat> you didn't even you you were so fucking close. So fucking close, yet a million fucking miles away. Let's articulate ourselves, why don't we? <laughs> it's dumb. We went from them being honestly, like, still very upset with each other. Even in the beginning of this episode, remember? 
remember, remember, to suddenly, because she helped Penny not fly away, it's suddenly, ha ha ha, let's laugh together and have a fun time and be friends. Yeah, you can switch sides, you can be our friend, ha ha ha, fuck off, fuck off. This didn't fix anything. What are you fucking laughing about, you idiot bitch? What? Mm. It, it, this is not a good resolution. She helped you with one task, which you could have done if Weiss wasn't just such a giant fucking baby and scared of the wind. Like, it wasn't even a damaging element to her. It just startled her. You... <clears throat> it's, it's stupid. It's contrived. It's really stupid. And I don't want this to happen. Because we also don't need it. Emerald is an entertaining character because she's a villain. She's an oddly sympathetic, complex person who is still choosing the side of villainy because of her love and loyalty to Cinder. That's an interesting character aspect. Now that she's gonna join the heroes, if she does do this, I think it's gonna be this really stupid bullshit where they're gonna ruin her character and just make her basically what Weiss was back in volume one. The slightly sassy one. But and just completely fucking butcher the character that made me, me like Emerald in the first place and it's unnecessary. On top of that, we have a million characters. A bajillion stupid fucking characters waltzing around. There's like nine dumbasses sitting over there and you want to add Emerald? And this is just the people who actually made it in the scene. We're not even counting Crow or M Maria and Pietro. What happened? <laughs> what happened to Maria and Pietro? <laughs> Are they still on Amity? Guys, guys, drop everything. Like, uh, 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 do they have food? <laughs> Are they okay? <laughs> well, that kind of proves my point, doesn't it? Like, there's a million characters, they literally have to just omit them from the volume. Most of our cast didn't do anything this volume. Ruby, Weiss, and Blake sat on their asses doing nothing in the Schnee Manor for 90% of the volume. And Nora and Penny were essentially in sick bay for that entire time as well. Maria and Pietro have vanished from the plot without any explanation. Crow was trapped in jail for the most of that volume as well, and Oscar was also kidnapped and couldn't do anything. There's, that's nine characters who are considered our main cast who are essentially forced to sit on the sidelines because there's just too many of them. There's too many of them for the plots you're trying to tell. We don't need Emerald in our cast. It's gonna be either she joins the team and just floats the screen time, or it's gonna be the stupid thing with Ilya, where she- I'm a good guy now! Thanks, Em! Now you can sit there and just not do anything. <laughs> Go to a different kingdom entirely, and we'll just ignore you for, I don't know, a couple years till we need you to do the spirit bomb to save the day at the end of the fucking volume, whatever. It's dumb. I can only hope. I can only hope, with all of my heart, that Em is lying. The last episode, when Oscar was sitting there telling everyone exactly how his bullshit magic worked, they said it right in front of Emerald. And there's a single shot where Emerald like looks back and she looks kind of suspicious. Like she's planning on stealing his cane and taking it to Cinder or something. I only hope that's her plan. That this is all just bullshit. That she's just fucking lying in this moment to gain their trust so she can then betray them and go back to Cinder. That is all I can believe in anymore. I would be less upset if it got any actual setup this entire volume. Because this can be written well. We've all seen Zuko. We've all seen that one character who was a bad guy who now isn't. These characters exist and they've been done very well before. Emerald has not. I wouldn't be upset if it was well executed, but it has not. There's literally nothing. It's disappointing. It's really upsetting. This episode is hard to talk about, hard to feel, because there are parts where I loved, parts that I hated, and parts that were just really boring. <laughs> it's written by three different people. I believe it's Miles, Eddie, and Kiersey, and you can tell. <laughs> you can tell it's like a weird hodgepodge of three different people's writing because it's all over the place. I don't know how I can- I guess I'll say this is a very down the middle episode because it, my emotions are literally all over the place that I can't call it good or bad or boring because there are aspects of the episode that go against all those, so it's an episode for sure. We're really close to the finale now. Like, only three episodes left. We gotta start wrapping things up. We gotta start finishing storylines and we're gonna- it's, we're gonna wrap this up. I wanna get to that part. I really wanna get there. <laughs> 
I'm excited for, for this finale. I can't wait to see how it's all gonna, you know, wrap up. There's a lot of plot points in a million different directions, so I want to see how that all turns out. I guess that's all I have to say. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> if I keep recording, I'm just gonna keep ranting about Emerald, and I can't do that for forever. <laughs> I'm the cleric. <laughs> I'm the cleric. What is this? Your... I've never, like, traveled with a bunch of people that I thought would die in front of me, okay? <laughs> Thank you for watching this video. I hope you liked it. Shout out to my $10 patrons. You're all amazing. Nako, Michael, James Dodds, Cool Duck, Andrew, Ramiel, Valhalla Knight, Chamomile, G Extreme, Classic Critic, Surge, Dakota D, Taj, Boulder Off Bros, Noah Perkins, Sunny Shy. So... Did you like this episode? <laughs> Did you hate it? Are you as mad about Emerald doing this? Like, I don't- any and all thoughts and opinions. <laughs> What did you think of this episode? Uh, what are you excited for with this volume? How do you think it's gonna end? What do you think about my bet about Penny and her maiden powers? I'm really hoping Nora becomes a maiden. You know? She deserves the love. She deserves it. Any and all thoughts and opinions, leave them in the comments below, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.